Okay, here I got a underwater fish identification slate. They're pretty awesome to have. You can actually attach them to your BCD and then under the water when you see something that you like, you can find it and identify it and learn a little bit more about it. So they're pretty handy. As you can see on these slates, it's, it's very colorful because all the fish have very beautiful colors, especially if you're diving in tropical areas. So now you're at 12 meters, you're seeing a pretty fish. It kind of looks like this one. You're looking at the name and it says red fire goby. Then you look at the picture and it's kind of brownish and white. And you kind of go like, well, why is it called red when it clearly looks brownish? It's because if you would take this slate back up to the surface, now you look at the fish, it actually does look very, very red. And that's because water absorbs colors. And the first color that disappears when you go under the water is red. And it starts to become, yeah, looking a little bit brownish. If you want to know what other colors will disappear, well, it's kind of the same order as the rainbow. So after red, kind of orange starts to go away and then yellow, etc., etc., etc. The deeper you go, the less colorful things will be. That is why sometimes when we have our students coming up from dive number one, where we went to a maximum depth of 12 meters, a lot of them are super excited, you know, it's so cool. But I do get the question saying, hey, um, it wasn't so colorful at certain points during the dive. When I was watching National Geographic underwater documentaries, it's much more colorful. But that has to do because in those, when they film those documentaries, they have these big lights on the side of their cameras lighting up the reef and the colors that they produce. And that's the reason why. Another reason is sometimes you guys have been snorkeling a lot where you've been very close to very shallow reef or, or fish and then the colors will be much more intense as well. Now, it doesn't mean now that when you go scuba diving, you're not going to see all these pretty colors that you imagine. There's lots of beautiful things to see. Um, there's lots of colors still to see. Some colors are extremely intense. However, it's going to be a little bit less than when you're seeing an extremely shallow or on land. So another thing that happens to us under the water is that objects appear larger and closer to us. Now, this is called refraction. Now, when you're under the water for your first dive, you might, you know, think like, hey, I don't really see a big difference. But that's because everything around you is sort of becoming larger and closer to you. So you can't really compare it. But there's definitely a difference. For us, we're, you know, as instructors, we have a, quite a lot of experience and we kind of know a little bit more about the differences between it. So it's kind of funny when our students come up and they say, wow, you know, it's so cool. It's all this really big fish. And then we're kind of know that that fish is kind of a bit smaller than what they say. But it doesn't mean they're lying. It's because you think it is really big because of refraction. Another thing that we notice is sometimes our students are too far away from the reef or the group because they think they're uh, close because of this refraction effect, but actually in, in reality, they're a little bit farther away. So when your instructor tells you to come a bit closer, don't worry about it. Just come a bit closer. It's all okay. Now we don't want you to get too close to the reef though that you might touch it. But on the other hand, we also don't want you to be too far that you can't enjoy or see anything or might even start to float up all the way back up to the surface. So again, colors get absorbed under the water and objects appear larger and closer when we go scuba diving. All right, let's look at question number two. 